G'day guys, how are we going? Look, I'm heading over to Wholesale Automatics in Bayswater this morning because they've got a PX Ranger in the workshop that's coming for some upgraded modifications to the automatic transmission. Now these guys are absolute specialists when it comes to automatic transmissions and when I get over there, I'm going to catch up with Rod and he's going to explain the benefits to having these modifications installed in your vehicle. Good mate, that's things. Good, good, so? Yeah, good mate, good. Excellent. So what have you got a PX Ranger in the workshop today for some upgrade modifications to automatic? We actually have one that's come in for the lot. Right. Where we're doing everything. Um, the best thing about it, we'll be able to film them all, but we're doing the heavy duty Nomad valve body with the cast aluminium pan in this case. Uh, the dual heavy duty uh, oil cooler setter. Lock-up kit, temp gauge kit, and obviously the transmission service. And One with a lot. That's that for <laughs> We've actually got it all set up outside, so we can actually show you everything that we're fitting in today. So if you're right, we'll go out and have a look. Let's go and check it out, eh? Good on you. Right, eh? All right, we're at the workshop here now. We've got a ranger there that all these new modifications are going to go into. So what have we got? Well, there's a whole range of things here, and um, we'll go through them one at a time, but just a quick run around. We've got the, the dual heavy-duty transmission oil cooler. We've got the lock-up kit, we've got the temp gauge kit, we've got the heavy-duty Nomad valve body and the uh, high-volume cast aluminium pan. Right. We'll start off with the oil cooler. Um, as we know, most trader utes, including the Ford Ranger and Mazda BT50, don't have an auxiliary cooler at the front whatsoever. Right. They rely on hot water to try and cool hot oil. It has limited success in doing so. Um, it seems to me when the manufacturers made these cars, they seem to think that people are going to carry a bucket and spade around in the back. <laughs> but not here in Australia. We use them. You know, we use them for camping, we tow heavy things, yeah. and we tow vast distances. Yeah. So we need the extra things to, to bring them up to the standard yeah. that we would expect here in Australia. So <clears throat> it is an all-Australian-made dual heavy-duty heavy cooler, which means this one's actually got two coolers. They're back-to-back -back on the same mount. The coolers are actually all-Australian-made. The mount is Australian-made. Uh, the mount is e-coated, which is actually 60% more resilient than galvanised steel. Yeah. Even all the little things, like all the cooler unions, the little bypass for the heater core, it's all, all Australian made. All right? Heavy duty high pressure lines that we actually put uh, a shield on, so they're actually, all the cooler lines are actually hidden inside a, a conduit, flexible conduit, and that's just to stop you know, stone, you know, stone strikes, stop rubbing and everything. So we put an awful lot of care into it. Even the the hose clamps are all stainless steel. Nothing's going to rust, rust and everything yeah. in it. They work brilliantly. The reason why we do two, uh, two coolers on this particular model is because the heat exchange unit does need to come off yep. um, to allow us to put it in. Every car needs to have two coolers. We also have these cooler units for many other makes and models, like including you know, the Toyota, uh, the Prado 120, 150, the Hiluxes, Colorados, D-Maxes, and the list goes on and on and on. Most of those cars actually already have a cooler in the bottom of the radiator, but they still don't have an auxiliary yeah, cooler. Yeah. So we only need to put one cooler on these, and that's how we do it. Every car must have two coolers. This is the way it works. We sell so many of these. These have been a big problem with these cars, and this fixes it 100%. Next, move on to the lockup lock kit. Up kit. We're probably famous for the lockup kit. We've been making them for 20 years now. It started with the old 80 series and yeah. the old GQs. And um, now we've gone on and we make them for so many models. Yeah, it's certainly handy for going in steep hills and that's well, it actually all wrong. it actually has two main um, uses. One is for engine braking, and that can be used in both high range or low range. Yep. So if you're towing and you're coming down any mountain, you can actually just turn the lock up on, and you get 100% engine braking, just like a manual. Yeah, right. Which means that when you are coming down a mountain, you're not relying on the caravan or the trailer's brakes all the way down, and you know. Especially if you've got the bigger weights, like a lot of people now are towing two and a half, three, even more tonne of a vehicle, which means on a long downhill, those brakes are actually going to start to fade. And when they fade, guess what? You're left with the car brakes, and if it's wet, you don't want that happening. So they allow you to give an engine brake, and what that does allows the brakes to rest all the way down the hill. You still have the brake assist, but that's how it uses. It's electronically controlled, so we're not just dumping 
uh, voltage, you know, battery voltage into a solenoid. It's actually all regulated. Um, the switch is wonderful. It's just a touch switch. Turns it on when you want. You turn it off when you when you when you when you finish with it. The um, the other thing it does is obviously saves you fuel when you're out on the open roads. Uh, this really is only for when you're towing. Is um, most people they tow an awful lot, but the, all vehicles, all of them, all the manufacturers do the same thing. Anything over 20% throttle, 25% throttle, the transmission's computer actually turns the lock up off. Yeah, right. So they're running on the torque converter all the time, which means they're slipping all the time, which means they're losing about four, five hundred, six hundred RPM in the case of the 200 series. Um, so they actually burn a lot of fuel. So if they've got a really bad fuel economy, or the temperatures are constantly up, um, that actually fixes that as well. So they're fantastic for solving two major problems that we have in Australia. That's engine braking on our big hills, and also when you're towing vast distances, use the lock up. You'll actually save yourself so many litres. In the case of the 200 series, you can save as much as six litres per hundred. It is massive. Something like the Ford Ranger, if it was towing, you'd still save three, three and a half, and four litres. Depends on the weight. The more weight you've got, we always say it's at least a litre per tonne of towing, except in the case of the 200 series, it's about two litres per tonne. Right? Move on to the temp gauge kit. The best thing about the temp gauge kit is telling people that it is not a simple gauge. Right? It doesn't just sit there and work like an engine temp and sit in the middle and doesn't move anywhere. The automatic transmission gauge moves around everywhere. You've got to think of it more of a strain gauge. The more strain you put on it, the higher the okay, temp goes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The best thing about it, when the lockup comes on, you'll notice the temp gauge just drop off. So if you are getting hot temperatures, you can use the, the, the lockup kit to manipulate your temperature. <laughs> it's actually a fantastic thing. And when you use a lockup, the temperature will actually harm. And literally, within 30 seconds, you can actually pull 40, 50 degrees see, out. See a change, yeah. But you wouldn't know it unless you could see it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, if you're game. playing around in sand or you're up driving in the hills, I do it myself. I've got a big vehicle. It's, you know, it's overloaded most of the time. So, and sometimes even I get into a situation on hills where I see the temperature come on, and I just drop it down a gear, put the lock up on, and even though I'm going uphill, my temperature's coming down and down and down as I go. So it's actually a fantastic working, thing. Yeah, it works well. So we've had so many customers turn around and say it's one of the best things that they ever did. They never, they learned so much about their transmission just by the habits of heat. They knew yeah. exactly what they were causing. Yeah. Last one. It's a new one for the Ford Ranger, but we've been building Nomad valve bodies for, for eons now. And we have them for most makes and models, all the Toyotas, all the Nissans, D-Maxes. You know, we have them for an awful lot of vehicles now. Um, but we're glad to introduce, for the first time, we've actually now mastered the, the Ford Ranger and the BT50. And this does all the six-speed models, so it doesn't matter what Ford Ranger you've got, as long as it's a six-speed, this will fit all of them. Right? does several things. Right? One, it'll give us one litre per better fuel economy. So one litre per hundred, better fuel economy, and that works all the time. Doesn't matter whether you're towing or not. Okay, it keeps the transmission cooler simply by we actually pump more pressure into the torque converter. When you wind up pressure inside a captive vessel, the oil viscosity changes; it gets a little bit thicker, therefore it slips less. So that's how we get our better fuel economy, simply because we're stopping slipping, generates less less heat. But the best thing about it, actually, we take all the factory faults out. Now they're known for the Ford Ranger's got a few of them. And each and every model has its own little quirks and we take all the factory faults out of all of them by using the heavy duty valve body. At higher line pressures, so we've got more clamping pressure to all the clutches and everything, bands if they've got them. Um, more oil flow through the coolers as well, better fuel economy. Um, in this case we also changed the cooler bypass where we actually bring the coolers on at a much lower temperature. The Ford Ranger is one of these vehicles that actually has a thermostat for the oil. Not many other makes and models, but they stick. They get so hot and they actually melt it and the little bead gets stuck in there and it turns the coolers off, sometimes permanently, to the detriment of the automatic. So we actually put a special one in. When we're doing the, the valve body, we actually put this in as well. And it actually lets the coolers start off much lower at about 50 degrees. It opens up and starts flowing. At the moment, they're set at about 100 degrees. So they've got a habit of running them really, really hot. But by the time your cooler comes on and you don't have an external oil cooler, the heat exchange unit is just overwhelmed, especially if you're towing, and it's a one-way trip to the side of the road. You know? This actually makes a big difference along with the cooler. Yeah, And we'll be fitting all of these things in the vehicle today. We'll be mainly focusing on filming the valve body, the pan and the oil cooler and the temp gauge will be going in as well and the lockup. but we'll catch what, you know, as much as we can in this video clip.
Well, the range is in there ready to go. It's great to get hoist off the ground and get these new bits in. What say we get it off the ground and get this operation started? I will. We'll get this all done and out. We'll get cracking. So why is it you pull the front shaft out of it? Um, so it gives you access to the heat exchange unit. Yep. Just to give it a clear, easy way to pull it out. Yep. Really, your best bet at this stage is to just be patient and let as much drain out as possible, just to avoid the mess afterwards. valve body. Um, it will contain something like that looks like this which works as like a thermostat and wait till it gets to an operating temperature and opens up a, another passageway for the oil core to run through. We'll be replacing it with one of these yep. which is a full time open passageway to see a full core in straight from the get go. solenoids will be swapping over into the new valve body um, you have to make sure that you keep them in order and change them over one at a time just because they are all different With the bottom mount on the cooler bracket, you could tech screw it in, but what we prefer to do is nut and bolt it because there's less chance of stripping the thread and this holds it nice and firm. There you go guys, you've seen these upgraded automatic transmission bits and pieces go into this PX Ranger. James is just doing the final bits of install and then this thing's ready to go. Now Wholesale Automatics, they've been in the business for 26 years and they pride themselves on their quality workmanship and what they don't know about automatic transmissions is probably not worth worrying about. So if you want to find out more how these guys can improve the performance of your automatic transmission in your vehicle, jump on their website, automatictransmission.com.au. And fair chance, I'll see you at the bush somewhere.